Joining me, Kevin Green, our senior markets correspondent, is looking for action this morning and has found some in the commodity world. Natty Gas is moving. Let's start there, KG. Good morning, sir. What's up with natural gas? Well, from a technical standpoint, Oliver, if you're looking at a three-year weekly chart, we are uh, kind of coming to an apex of this uh, triangle formation that's taking place for natural gas. And we do have the seasonal patterns or demand draws that we should see starting pretty much now uh, going into pretty much the remainder of March of next year. And this setup is actually, for the most part, actually very bullish, not only on the weekly chart, but also if you're looking at the monthly chart here. And this is something I'm just kind of keeping my eye out on because there's a significant amount of short positioning for managed money uh, out there. And if we do have any type of semblance of demand uh, starting to gain some strength, uh, maybe also consumption in Europe, uh, you know, actually ramping up here, uh, we could actually see a short uh, squeeze in the making. I'm not sure if it's going to be today, obviously, but this is something that I'm keeping on my radar that's been kind of uh, thrown by the wayside by a lot of commodity traders out there. Oh, wow. Pretty uh, interesting setup here if it breaks out. Uh, is it super specific to this commodity, KG? Uh, what are kind of the other fundamental ties that we could argue might show up in other energy commodities at all? I think it's just specific to this commodity when you're looking at the setup right now. Uh, once again, there's a significant amount of short positioning taking place. Uh, and then you also have that seasonal factor. Other commodities like metals are actually catching a little bit of a bid, but I think that's more of enthusiasm for the China trade and additional stimulus that could be hitting the market. I think that's a little bit separate from what we're seeing in the, the energy complex right now. All right. Uh, nice. Good eyes on uh, Natty there. Big pop uh, overnight and continuing. All right. Uh, let's talk some stocks. S&P start off a little lower here, but uh, there's a plenty in big tech that it's working. You've got Alphabet up ahead of earnings. Apple, a little sluggish to start. NVIDIA, same story, but everything about half a percent to a percent higher. That's helping the NASDAQ. But the uh, Russell did kind of flip uh, after getting some strength to start off the week, giving it back here this morning. Small cap slipping in a bit of a hurry there. Bonds really selling off, though. This bond thing is uh, pretty intense now. 10-year yields at 4.3. Just looks like it's unrelenting dollar rally in two as far as the levels on stocks go uh mr green s p 500 we've been talking about that uh wedge it's been rising in we've been talking about advanced decline hanging in there but we've also been talking about some limited upside and we have certainly been kind of bumping up against some resistance it seems like uh, yeah, definitely. And I think right now when you're kind of looking at today's session, we just have to really try to maintain above that 5,800 level here, Oliver. We are, are we are already seeing some, some negative flows, some bearish flows going into the 5,780 puts. So keep your eye out on that. That might be an area where the market tries to gravitate to if we do break uh, these, uh, these current levels. And I'm looking for an intermediate area of support or maybe a bounce, maybe some buyers stepping in at 5,808. We're pretty much trading at 5,809 right now. And the reason why I actually have that on the radar is for the most part, that was the lows that we saw uh, in on Friday's session here, and we actually touched it twice before breaking back to the upside here. So 5808, an immediate area that you want to see a little bit of a bounce for. If not, and we continue to flush through, 58, 7, or 5780 is uh, an area where I would say that maybe some dealers kind of step in. On the upside, if you're looking at the volume levels for the upside or the, the price levels for the upside, 5820 is going to be your first intermediate area of resistance for the market. And then I want to, again, have 5850 out there. Uh, reason why 5850 continues to show up is just just because the, the flow has continued to be very sticky there. Yesterday, what was actually very interesting though, you started seeing a little bit more of a pickup and put buying in the 5820 strike. Uh, that's something that we haven't seen over the last couple of trading sessions here. Uh, I would say that that's still, once again, some bearish positioning. We have not broken that wedge yet, but it seems like the bears are starting to come out uh, a little bit out of, out of the, the cave and maybe nibbling on some of these bearish bets, maybe hoping for some uh, economic data that's a lot stronger than what the market expects. Yields can continuing to move to the upside here and maybe some lackluster earnings or guidance coming from the max seven names. All right. The uh, kind of short term resistance that's building up with some of those flows starts to get kind of interesting when you've got uh, so many other signs of like uh, risk on uh, happening, uh, especially in the crypto markets ripping. Maybe there is a policy side there. Maybe we're starting to see some of that stuff bleed through. Uh, but, uh, you know, the Russell had a good day yesterday. That was interesting, even though bonds were selling off. I mean, there's a lot of cross currents here right now. But to your point, I feel like the biggest one, the strongest one is going to be earnings. 
That's what moves the market. There's nothing more correlated with stocks over time than earnings, and the giants are coming out. So uh, the, the MAG-7 stocks generally have been pretty strong. So, I mean, we've got some decent momentum. The NASDAQ momentum, a little better than S&Ps, like on the margin right now, perhaps, KG? A, a tad bit, and you're actually seeing a very strong correlation between the NASDAQ 100 equal weight and the NASDAQ 100 uh, you know, market cap weighted, which is something, uh, obviously, fun. they do have a correlation, but we're seeing a lot more of a stronger correlation, just meaning that some of the other uh, stocks within that NASDAQ 100 is starting to catch a little bit more steam here, maybe trying to uh, soften the blow of, of some of this you know, consolidation or maybe some of these smaller pullbacks that we're seeing in the MAG-7. And, and you're obviously right here. You know, Those are going to be the big drivers for uh, the market, and they're going to be a key driver when it comes to earnings. And if we have better than expected earnings expectations moving forward and guidance, that makes the multiple, the forward multiple, which we're sitting at around 22 and a half, 23, be a little bit more palatable. Now, unfortunately, you have an uh, increasing uh, real rate environment right now, kind of a bear steepener, but the market's been able to uh, hold on uh, as uh, rates kind of go higher here. So I'm right there with you. But uh, if we have any type of miss, from any of the names, I think that probably would, uh, you know, start the, the the selling process here. Maybe coming back, testing the twenty day moving average, and then hopefully trying to bounce off of there, keeping that wedge intact at least for now. I, I don't, I still don't believe that we're going to be in that wedge uh, by this time, uh, you know, next week. And I'm kind of looking for PCE as well as the jobs report on Friday to really be that catalyst. X the earnings that we're going to see from AMD and and Google and Microsoft. All right. Well said. Uh, in the same camp with you, but uh, we are kind of drifting out of that wedge right now. And I feel like I'm even more convinced that like Vol's gonna drop in some way after election, but uh, it kind of seems like we're getting pinched in real tight into this range. So I'm with you there. It seems like something's, something's gotta give. Thank you, Mr. Green. Good setup here for the session. S&P's at 5804 with some resistance building overhead as Steeler flow continues to apply a little bit of uh, limitation to the market. Thanks, Kevin Green.